The most important thing you have to know about multiplying fractions is that anything from the top can cancel out anything from the bottom as long as there's no plus or minuses between the terms. And if there is, you put brackets around them, and if you have the same terms in the top and the bottom, then you can cancel them out. So let's say you're multiplying these three fractions together. What you have to know is, the most important thing you have to know is, is that anything from the top can cancel out anything from the bottom as long as there's no plus or minuses between them, right? And that's the case right now. Now I've seen people actually sit down and multiply the whole top row together, get a huge number, multiply the bottom row together, get a huge number, and then go ahead and try to simplify it after multiplying everything else. So they're making numbers huge, and then they're trying to shrink them down again, right? Which is really going about it the most difficult way possible, right? Because in mathematics, when you're simplifying, pretty important to realize that it's easier to deal with smaller numbers than it is to deal with bigger numbers, right? So you're gonna to try to crunch your numbers as quickly as possible. So for these three fractions, all we have to do is realize that they have common factors, right? Prime factors or factors in general, and we could start knocking things off. So five goes into 15, five goes into 25, five goes into 15 three times, five goes into 25 five times, six, six, goes into six once, six goes into 12 twice, right? We have a five here, we have a five here. That's gone, that's gone, right? So we killed everything else and the only thing we have left is, we only have a two left in the top and what do we have left in the bottom? We only have a three left in the bottom, so three. So what we ended up doing is just simplifying before we multiply, right? Because that way the numbers become smaller and once we end up multiplying the smallest possible factors together, that's the biggest the numbers can be. We don't have to worry about reducing anything, right? Now, what you have to be really careful with is the following. Let's say you have, you got nine plus three divided by three. I've seen a lot of people try to cancel this three and this three, okay? And as we said, anything from the top can cancel out anything from the bottom as long as there's no pluses or minuses between them, right? So you can't cross these two guys out because these two guys are attached together, right? They're married, they're joined at the hips. This plus sign makes them one term, right? So what you have to do is take care of this first. So you can put this in brackets. Nine plus three is 12. So three goes into 12 four times. Okay, so the answer ends up being four. Now this works the same way if you flip it. So if you had three divided by nine plus three, well guess what, the same thing. This plus sign attaches these two guys. This three cannot kill this three. You have to join these guys, merge these guys first. So nine plus three is 12. So you can just cross it out and put the total here. 12, three up top, 12 on the bottom. Three goes into both of them. Three goes into this once, three goes into this four times, so the answer is one over four, right? So this reduces down to a quarter. Now the beauty of mathematics is our rules, our laws that apply to numbers, well, they apply to terms. So let's say we have to follow. If you had x minus one divided by x, I've seen a lot of people make this mistake. They actually end up crossing this x out with this x and they say the answer is negative one, right? That doesn't work. This negative sign attaches these two guys. They're married. This is one complete term. The only way you can cancel out x minus one up here, if you had an x minus one down here and you don't, right? So this x does not kill this x. And this fraction you can't reduce anymore because this negative sign combines those two guys, right? This also works in the flip. So if you had x squared over x squared plus one, well, you can't cancel these guys out because this plus sign attaches those two guys and this is one complete term. This term is different than this term, okay? This and this do not cancel out, okay? The only way that you can actually cancel anything if you ever given an expression like this is if you can combine your terms. Over here you can't combine them because they're not like terms. These two guys you can't combine them because they're not like terms, okay? So let's say you have three x squared plus x squared divided by x squared. Now this x squared cannot kill this x squared. It can't take this out. Why? Because there's a plus between these two terms, right? So the only way to do this is to get rid of this plus. The only way to simplify this is to get rid of this plus. And if you can combine these two terms, that's the way you do it, right? Now three x squared plus x squared, that's gonna be equal to four x squared. So you add these two guys, you're gonna get 4x squared, right? 
Now you have 4x squared divided by x squared. Well, guess what? Now you can simplify it. This x squared can now kill this x squared, right? Because there is no plus or minus between any of the terms. So this guy takes out this guy, and your final answer for this is 4. Okay. Let's go do something a little bit more complicated. So this really sets in and you understand how, this, how we go about doing these things, okay? So let's say we had the following, uh, x minus one over three x plus two times three x squared plus five x plus two divided by x plus one, right? And we want to do this, do this operation. We want to multiply these things together. Well, the rules still apply. Anything from the top can cancel out anything from the bottom. There's one problem though. Right now, the terms are set up in a way that there's nothing that cancels out. So what we have to do is, you know, learn how to deal with these kinds of terms and we talked about the stuff in series 3a and series 3b which is basically these are polynomials and we know how to factor polynomials so if we put brackets around all these things nothing cancels out but we have a trinomial there right complex trinomial and we know how to factor this from series 3a and 3b that's a complex trinomial so what we end up doing is using the four step method to factor that right and if we use the four step method to factor that we're going to get the following that breaks down into the following two polynomials so we can just kill it right cross it out now if we look at this we have the same terms in the bottom as we do in the top, right? We got three, three x plus two in the bottom over here and we got three x plus two up there, right? Because all we can do is just put brackets around that and that becomes its own term, right? So that will cancel the one up top there and we got x plus one in the bottom over here and x plus one in the top over there. So those two cancel out. So all, we end up, all we're gonna end up with is just x minus one. So this whole thing multiplied together is just gonna be equal to x minus one. So once we've done this, right, everything canceling out, we're left with x minus 1, and that's the final answer. That's what we get when we multiply this thing with this thing, right? And here's the beauty of mathematics. What holds true for numbers holds true for terms, holds true for words, units. And you can extend this to anything, may it be words, may it be units. The rules of mathematics do not change, right? So for example, let's say we had apples, we're trying to you know, deal with apples and orange. So let's say you had apples over oranges times oranges squared divided by apples, right? The apples kills the apples up top, and one orange down here kills one of the oranges there. So all you end up with is oranges in the top. So what we just ended up doing was just multiplying a whole bunch of words together, apples and oranges together, which are basically units, and ended up with just oranges, right? And you can do this with other types of units. So let's say you had the following. So let's say you had the following, right? You had kilometers per hour, miles per kilometers, and hours per second multiplied together. Well, guess what? The rules of mathematics don't change. Anything from the top can cancel out anything from the bottom. Let's do it again. So just doing this multiplication, we have kilometers kill kilometers, hours kills hours, and we end up with miles divided by second, right? And just, you know, that's just multiplying three fractions together. They just happen to be units, words, instead of numbers. But if there were numbers, all you would do is put the numbers wherever they belong, and we do exactly the same thing, right? The rules of mathematics don't change. You would do exactly what we did with the numbers. Anything from the top cancels out anything from the bottom, right? As long as there's no plus or minuses between them. That's how you do your uh, multiplying fractions together. It's super, super powerful. You use it everywhere. It is one of the basic tools that you need at your disposal to be able to do math. I've seen people bring out calculators and multiply, you know, the numerator together, you can create a gigantic number, multiply the denominator, create a gigantic, and then try to reduce it from there. Something that should have taken them about 10 seconds to do, takes them like 10 minutes to do, which is absolutely chaotic. It's, it's just chaos. It makes life difficult. It's, it's miserable. It's not fun, right? Learn how to multiply fractions. This is the most important thing you need to know. Anything from the top can cancel out anything from the bottom as long as there's no plus or minuses between them, okay? I'll see you guys in the next video.